Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and welcome to another exciting project video today. So, earlier this year, Creality released the Falcon A1 laser cutter, and honestly, I thought it was a bit of a game changer for casual hobbyists like us who are working at home. Well, now they've gone and updated it, and this is the Falcon A1 Pro. Uh, today, I'm going to take a good look at what's new about it. Now, just a quick note before we do dive in, this video is sponsored by Creality, so it's the same deal as last time. I'm not doing a traditional review here because, you know, with sponsorship involved, I can't claim to be 100% impartial. What I can do, though, is run you through all the new features, uh, compare it side by side with the previous Falcon A1, and let you know how I feel about the new model now that I've had some real-world experience with it. And, of course, I'm not going to leave it there. I want to put the A1 Pro to the test, and I've got an idea for something exciting to build for one of my layouts. More on that later. Of course, if by the end of this video you're interested in getting the Falcon A1 Pro for yourself, there is a link down in the description so you can get all the details and see all the information about it. But for now, let's dive straight in. So this is the Falcon A1 Pro, and right now you're probably thinking it looks pretty similar to the standard A1. Don't worry, I'm going to cover all the new features in just a moment, but because this has an enclosed design, I want to show just how simple it is to get this machine set up. Once you have the A1 Pro on your workbench, the first thing to do is hook up the extraction hose. This connects to the fan at the back, and once you have that on, it can simply be tightened up using the supplied clamp. Next is the hose for the air assist on the side, and that's followed shortly afterwards by the control cable. The power cable goes in next, and we're already almost done. But one of the new upgrades for the Pro is a brand new touchscreen, which we do have to add to the machine. Again, this is really simple, there's a cable on the side which just plugs into the back of the screen. The whole thing then slots down into the bracket, which is already in place. Of course, not forgetting to remove the plastic film from the screen. And on that note, let's remove the protective film from the main part of the body too. So a really quick setup, and aside from that new touchscreen, the A1 Pro looks almost identical to its predecessor. But honestly, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, one of the main reasons that I love using the standard A1 is because the enclosed design makes it such an easy machine to work with. So yeah, I'm glad that Creality have stuck with it here. And of course, like before, we've got a camera built into the chassis for lining up your designs too. Like I said, the only real visual difference is that new touchscreen. It's a nice addition, and I can see it being really handy if you mostly work with files on a USB stick, kind of similar to how many 3D printers work. Being honest though, uh, I mostly control my lasers from a laptop, so I'm not sure how much use I'll actually have for the touchscreen. My only major gripe with it as well is that I do wish it could just fold back in. Um, I'm just constantly worried I'm going to knock it at some point with it sticking out of the side constantly. And while it doesn't feel flimsy, there is a little bit of movement to it. So that would be my only note, I guess. Um, but yeah, moving on though, another change that is easier to miss is the bed design. Uh, on the A1, the bed was completely flat, but for the A1 Pro, it actually sits in a slightly recessed frame. Now, this is great if you're using a honeycomb bed, and in fact, Creality do actually make one that fits exactly into this space. Um, I believe this is sold separately, but if you're doing a lot of cutting rather than just engraving, it is absolutely worth getting a honeycomb bed, and having one that is designed to fit your machine is just a no-brainer in my opinion. The biggest upgrade, though, is the laser module itself. Where the A1 had a 10-watt laser, the A1 Pro steps that up to a more powerful 20-watt laser meaning it can cut through material more easily and potentially much faster depending on the type of job. Uh, and that's not all because the Pro also has a secondary 2 watt infrared laser module which opens up the possibilities of engraving with metals and certain plastics too. Um, I have to admit, I haven't had the chance to properly experiment with this yet as I am on quite a tight deadline for this video, uh, but it's great to have this as an option and I'm looking forward to trying it out in the future. Now, because the standard 20 watt laser is slightly bigger, you do lose some of the working area over the previous Falcon A1. That's not a massive issue, but I did notice I had a little bit more wastage on the top and bottom of my material when I was using some standard 30 centimeter square sheets. So that is something to be aware of. 
But back to the positives, another long-awaited improvement is the autofocus feature. Now, lots of other laser brands have had this built in for a while, and honestly, it was always a little bit frustrating that Creality didn't have this until now. Uh, previously, you had to manually loosen the laser head and use a leveling block to set the height based on the thickness of your material. But now you simply just place the material under the little red dot that you'll see here. You hit the autofocus button from either the touchscreen or Creality Design Space on your laptop, and the machine just does the rest. It really is that simple. Once you get the hang of it, it's so easy to do. You just sit back and watch the A1 Pro set itself to the correct height. Um, I will say I did have some trouble getting this to work properly in Lightburn. Uh, it turns out you do need a configuration file that Creality have created, which I had to go digging for. Um, but once you find that and you've got it all set up, it does work as it's supposed to, which is good. Uh, so the Falcon A1 Pro definitely looks like a really capable machine with some nice upgrades over the original. But I don't want to just talk about specs. I want to put it through its paces and actually make something. So, for a while now, I've wanted to add a canopy to the station on Teton, my TT120 layout. I never got around to it when originally making the layout, but that's all about to change. So here you can see I've designed a canopy that I'm cutting from a mix of 2mm wood and 0.4mm laser board. For the most part the design itself is pretty simple, but there are a lot of different parts that all need to fit together and be consistent against each other, so this is the perfect use for laser cutting. While the A1 Pro is busy working away on that, I do have a few extra thoughts. Um, Again, I do have to mention how quiet these machines are. Um, I've got both of them running currently, and yeah, while the A1 Pro is a little bit more noisy than the standard A1, um, it's certainly not too distracting when you're being in here, and you know, it's possible to film with the microphone and everything not being completely blown out. Like with the standard A1, the whole design still feels very consumer friendly, uh, and every time I try one of these new machines, it feels like the process gets a little bit simpler. In some ways though, that can lead to oversimplification. Um, the A1 Pro works great with both Falcon Design Space or the onboard software via that touchscreen, and these are fantastic starting points for those who are brand new to the world of laser cutting. Getting it set up with Lightburn wasn't quite as simple though, as I alluded to a little bit earlier. Um, in the past, I've just been able to plug the machine into my laptop and Lightburn finds it without any issue. Uh, but with the A1 Pro, there's a few little quirks, which I'm still figuring out, and that's not to say it doesn't work, but, you know, things like homing and autofocus, uh, I just need to remember they work differently than the way I'm used to. Hey everyone, so I'm recording this after the rest of the video just because I have a bit more information and experience with the A1 Pro now. So, originally at this point in the video, I went on to explain how I'd had a few issues with using the A1 Pro, specifically with Lightburn. Uh, things like the air assist not working properly, uh, parts of the designs were being skipped or missed, uh, and most frustratingly, the machine kept crashing when trying to run it using Lightburn. Um, at the time, it was my opinion that the A1 Pro didn't work with Lightburn, at least not consistently enough, which was a real shame considering that it's the industry standard and all of the previous Creality machines have worked with it just fine. Uh, now, obviously, all this was fed back to Creality and their engineers, and we had a bit of a back and forth, and I don't know if this is just a coincidence, but a couple of days later, an update was made available for the A1 Pro, which fixed most of these issues. Um, the Air Assist now is mostly working, uh, and most importantly, the machine hasn't crashed once since the update, which is fantastic. It's still a little bit slower all round in comparison to the previous laser cutters I've looked at, but generally it does now work with Lightburn. Um, naturally, if you talk to Creality, they will recommend using their dedicated Falcon Design Space software to run the machine, and if you're brand new to laser cutting, I would also recommend using this software too. I mean, it comes free with the machine, unlike Lightburn, which you have to buy separately. And it's really simple and easy to use if you want to get up and running with the basics of laser cutting really quickly. 
The caveat, of course, is that Falcon Design Space doesn't have some of the more advanced features that Lightburn does. So if you're a more advanced user who prefers using Lightburn, you do have to be aware that the A1 Pro has a few quirks when using it with Lightburn. That said, the standard A1, in my experience, works perfectly with Lightburn, so you do have a choice. You can get the standard A1 to use with Falcon Design Space or Lightburn with no issues, or you can get the extra features of the A1 Pro and accept that you might have to make some compromises if you are determined to use it in Lightburn. I do want to stress though that the A1 Pro is still perfectly capable of making stuff. Um, after all, you saw me cutting the canopy design earlier on, and now we get to see how that's turned out and assemble it into a finished model. So these are the parts that make up the canopy, and you can see there's quite a lot going on here. There are various semicircle type sections that form the main ribs of the structure. Meanwhile, the window panels are cut from much thinner laser board. And then we had the long side girders which will run down the length of the entire canopy, holding the ribs steady. This is where I'll start the assembly by fitting two of the ribs into the girder. I made sure in my design that there were slots for these to fit into, and because it's all laser cut, it's nice and snug. The same thing is done for the other side too, and if you're wondering, I'm just gluing all this together with some PVA. There's then another section of ribs to go on each end, and again these have little slots and tabs to hold them in position. One of the end sections does have a slightly different design, as this is intended to represent the front face of the canopy. And with that, the main structure of the canopy is done. Once the glue was dry, I took it outside for a spray of grey paint, which already makes this look so much better. I did the same for the window pieces too, and I fitted in some acetate to represent glass on these sections as well. For the glazing, I'm literally just gluing a whole strip of acetate to the back of each window panel. So with these ready, I can start gluing them to the main structure. There's five in total, one for the top and then two on each side gradually sloping downwards. These rest on flat angles which will cut into the main frame, and having all this be laser cut means those surfaces are identical along the entire length. You'll notice that there are gaps between each of the panels. Uh, these are, of course, vents for the steam engines, and definitely not a measuring mistake that I made, just so we're all clear on that one, okay? In all seriousness though, the laser cutter will do exactly what you ask of it, so this is definitely an operator error moment rather than an issue with the A1 Pro. There's also a second front section which has an acetate window fitted to it as well. With the canopy facing upwards, I'll glue this onto the existing set of windows at the front to create a bit of extra depth and relief and the acetate is sandwiched between the two pieces of wood so we won't see any of the edges. With that, this entire section is done, but I really want this to be a standout feature on the layout. So I repeated the entire process again to double the length of the canopy. These are then both glued together back to back, and because it's laser cut, I know it's all gonna look the same and fit together perfectly. The final step was to add the support columns. For these, I opted to go for 3D printing, so I drew up a really quick column design and then printed them using my resin printer. They were given a coat of green spray paint just to bring some colour to the canopy, and then they're simply glued in place, fitting nicely under the main girders. And this is a really nice mix of using both laser cutting and 3D printing. Two very different modelling disciplines, but each with their own uses, and by combining them together like this, it really opens up a lot of new possibilities for both. With that though, the canopy is finished, so we'll leave this to dry, and then we'll see what it looks like on the layout. So here we are on Teton, this is the main station, and it's time to get that brand new canopy in place. Honestly, I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. From the outside, it's really hard to miss, and it gives the station much more of a mainline terminus feel than it did previously. Then getting the camera inside, you can really see all that nice lattice work above the trains, just like you would when you look up at a big railway station and see all the metalwork above you. 
It's absolutely fantastic, and it's great that I was able to create something like this with the Falcon A1 Pro. Otherwise, it would have taken me weeks to scratch build all these parts by hand, and honestly, at my skill level, it wouldn't have looked anywhere near as good. I do feel it's sitting a little bit tall at the moment. Uh, I did want to make sure that I could still see the trains when looking in from the side, but I think I may have gone a bit too high with the 3D printed columns. I may redo those anyway, especially as you can see here, one or two have warped slightly, creating a sort of banana effect. But the main laser cut structure itself is fantastic, and it's really quite sturdy considering how intricate it looks. It certainly transforms the station though, it makes it feel like a really grand terminus, and honestly I'm so excited to see what else I can come up with for the A1 Pro. And as always, there are links in the description if you're interested in getting one of these machines for yourself. It certainly opens up a new avenue of creativity for the hobby, and with these machines becoming much more accessible for home users and hobbyists like us, I think it'll be really interesting to see where this goes in the future. In the meantime though, I hope you've enjoyed this little build project, and if you did, don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button too. That's it for today though, so thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!